Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Yep, you can hear me now. What the heck happened there? That was so strange. Okay, you guys should be fine. All right, everybody's got sound. Let's start over. Good morning. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? My name is... Are you still saying no, no sound? Did hear the intro. Okay, you can't hear now. Chad Varner says no sound. What the heck? Ray Hatcher says yeah. Yes, John. Okay. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Today is Tuesday, November 27th, 2018. That's right. The first and last time it'll ever be Tuesday, November 27th, 2018. So we want to make the most of this absolutely incredible day. Listen, yesterday's episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind. If you guys did not watch yesterday's episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind, I need you to go back and watch it. Yesterday's episode was a really good episode. It was really good, man. I'm telling you, I go back sometimes and I watch these shows after after I'm done, um, I go back and I, and I watch the shows sometimes, not always, and, and, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> that was really good, you know? And I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that. It's just that these messages are brought to me every single morning. I don't know what we're going to talk about until it's time for us to talk about it. And so sometimes I just kind of have to roll through it, and then I go back and listen to it, and I'm like, man, that was some good stuff. So yesterday's episode was some really good stuff. And yesterday I mentioned people having stuff, right? Yesterday I mentioned people kind of having stuff going on in their lives, stuff under the sur surface that we maybe don't recognize, we maybe, maybe don't know is there. But I, 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 I've talked about that, and then it was interesting because yesterday I, I, I saw that Derek McLean, Derek has stuff going on. I don't know if you guys saw that. Derek's got stuff going on with his wife. Uh, some medical type stuff. Derek's our, our runner guy that's posting in the group every single day. Uh, uh, that's been running hundreds of miles this year. He's got stuff going on. I also saw uh, Kenzie, Kenzie Kilkenny, one of our group members. She's got some stuff going on. They've got some scares as far as with the baby and so on and so forth. She's got stuff going on. And then I saw the Sharp family. The Sharp family and their son Josh, I don't know if you saw that post, I shared it into the group and asked for prayers, but their son Josh, he's in a he's in a coma, they're hoping that he comes out of it. They got stuff going on, right? I also saw another family, listen to this, man, I saw another family uh, yesterday, and I guess their car, they, it was a mom, uh, a mom, a daughter, a son, and, and the daughter's friend, and their car got T-boned by a semi-truck yesterday t-boned by a semi truck and the mom is okay the two kids are critical and one of the kids died right so there is so much stuff that's going on in the world there's stuff that goes on in life and and life is it's so fickle right it's so fickle and it's so fragile and it's so mysterious you ever it's it's so misunderstood like we always are asking ourselves this question like why 
why? Why does God allow these things? Why do these why do these things things happen in our life? We ask those questions. Why? And I'm here to tell you, I can't answer the question of why today. I'm I'm not the I, uh, authority. Like I have my beliefs. I have my I have my understandings of the universe, but I'm not the authority. I didn't create life. I didn't create the universe. I didn't create existence. I know who did, but it wasn't me. And I didn't I didn't write the rules. I didn't I didn't write the, I didn't write the rules about about death and struggle and and purpose and the fragility of life and all of that. I didn't write those rules. But here's what I do know. Here's one thing I do know. Here's one thing I am an authority on and that I will share with you this morning. All of these things, all of this stuff, the stuff that you have going on in your world, the stuff that you have going on in your life right now, all of that stuff has a purpose. It has a purpose. I can't define the purpose. I don't know what the purpose is. I can't tell you exactly right now. I didn't create the rules, but I can tell you it all has a purpose. It all has a place. It is all by design. It is. And we're going to dive into that a little bit a little bit further today because I know that we all got stuff going on. And we're going to do something a little bit differently today. But before we do, before we do something differently, let's do it. There we go. That's a little loud. Let me turn that down real quick. We got the got the little epic music going on this morning. Okay, that's better. That's better. <laughs> hey guys, if you've been here before or you haven't been here before, this is the part of the show where I really, really, really need you to hit that share button. Today's super, super important. It's super important. If you normally don't hit share, I need you to hit share today. If you're watching on replay, I need you to hit share today. It's really, really important. This is the part of the show where we hit that share button. This is also the part of the show where I say good morning to you and you say good morning to me. So make sure you comment again, whether you're watching on replay or watching live, I want to hear from you. Good morning, Janelle Griego and Vicki Everett. Good morning, Raheem and Chris Yancey. What's up, AJ Schultz and Melvin Rodriguez? My man Archie's up in here. Frank Rivera and Ryan Rhino Smith. Good morning, Sean Isaacs, Joshua Stifler, Ray Hatcher, and Anthony Santangelo. What's up, Don Sankey? What's up, Jamie Eubanks? What's up, Sean Isaacs? David Kai Kendall's up in here. What's up, George Fleming? We got all kinds of people up in here. My man Aaron Jones is up in here this morning. My man back in Flagstaff, Arizona, Raymond Ramon All Day. His name is All Day. I love calling him All Day. He's up in here this morning. Danielle Rose. Gail B. Craft. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? I believe Susan's up in here. Katrina's up in here. Pam Biddle's up in here. All the Twang sisters up in here. Whitney Wells is up in here. Everybody's up in here. I love it. Listen, today is important. Today is important. It's so important that you're here today. It's not by chance or coincidence that you're here today. I am so thankful that you're here today because we all need to talk about this. We've all got this stuff. We got this stuff. And we need to talk about where that stuff come from, why that stuff's important. And we're going to do that today on a very unique and interesting episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind. Did I ever let everybody know that my man Josh... Oh! Is up in here? <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to miss it. Nope, 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 nope. Look, normally I don't do this, but I'm going to show you guys a video... Normally when I pop in a video, it's like two minutes long or something, you know, something like that. But this one's a little bit longer. I'm going to share this video with you because I think it's really, really important that we all hear this today, especially today. Um, before we do, I do want to mention hashtag rise and grind offline. You guys have been, uh, you, you know, basically if you committed to feeding a family for the holidays for the hashtag rise and grind offline, I need you to start getting those, the, getting that in order. Um, if you need help finding a family to feed, you can 
message me, but basically just find a family locally. There's ways to do it through your church or through other programs. Find somebody to feed. Make that commitment. We're going to feed 100 families across the United States. Also, uh, make sure you're going to glennlundy.com because we've got Rise and Grind gear. We've got our fall lineup out there. Makes great Christmas gifts. People's planners are starting to show up in their mailboxes. Some started showing up yesterday. You're going to have more showing up today. So if you ordered a planner, it will come to you depending on when you ordered it. You'll have it within two weeks. I promise you that. But I'm going through. I'm signing the ones that I need to sign. I'm getting them shipped out. I think you guys will be super excited when you get it in your hands. So far, the feedback that I've gotten is people are thrilled with the absolute product, which makes me happy. Lastly, make sure you're sending me your Rise and Grind testimonies because I am going to be selecting five different groups of people to go out and visit with camera crews and all of that stuff. And I want to actually captivate or capture your Rise and Grind story and get to know you a little bit better on a different level. So right now I've got Michael Jasper. We're going to be going to his out to his house, meeting him and his wife and doing that. We also have Tustin Ulrich and Roper Kia. We're going to be doing that. And then also this one, she doesn't know yet, but after Bambi's awesome testimony, I am going to make sure that me and my camera crew go out and get to know Bambi and her husband a little bit better because she has an incredible hashtag rise and grind story. Absolutely incredible. So make sure that you're sending me that stuff as well. Okay, listen, get ready, sit back, get ready, and pay attention because the video that I'm about to share with you, it could possibly open your eyes to something. It could possibly change your life. I don't know exactly. All I know is that it's powerful, it's impactful, and it matters. Join me. Let's go. My grandmother became my first hero. Growing up, my grandmother never used an alarm clock. But every morning, my grandmother would wake up at 4.15. And at 4.16, her feet would hit the floor, usually right in front of my face. And that's what would wake me up. But I would lay there and I would pretend like I was still asleep because me and 4.15 really didn't get along. But Grandma would look at the back of my head. I could feel her staring at me. And then finally she would say, Now, sugar, Grandmama know you ain't sleep. You just supposed to go on and get on up and get ready for school. And my grandmother was known for saying things that would kind of make you a little angry because they made so much sense and you couldn't argue with her. <laughs> parents, you know, there are things that you, when you become parents, you start to say to your own kids. Like my grandmother would say, now son, you knew when you laid down there last night that you had to get up this morning. <laughs> I don't know why every single morning you lay there and act surprised. <laughs> you ought to be thankful that the Lord saw fit to wake you up this in your right mind. <laughs> but what my grandmother was encouraging me to do was simply to be grateful for the opportunity. In spite of all that I had been through in my life, she just wanted to make sure that I understood the opportunity that I've been given. My life got started, it was a little rough, it was a little rough start. I was born two months premature. My mother was walking up a flight of stairs and she didn't know this at the time, but a woman she had had an argument with earlier was standing above her holding a pot of boiling water. As my mom made her way up those stairs, that woman dumped that water onto my mom and sent her tumbling down the stairs and into premature labor. She received third degree burns to over 25% of her body. And when we were finally allowed to leave the hospital, as you can imagine, my mom was in a great deal of pain. Those burns just nearly, barely missed her face and covered most of the front of her body. So when we got home, she began taking a heavy sedative, pain medication to help her recover. When she took that medication, it was very difficult for her to watch me, so I would bounce around a lot. I'd stay with my mom for a little bit, and then I'd go stay with grandma, and I'd stay with some neighbors, aunties, and then back to my mother's house. I did that for the first three years of my life. When I was three years old, I was back at my mom's house, and I got into her purse, I found that medication, I swallowed everything in the bottle. When they found me, they rushed me to the hospital, and my heart would stop, and eventually I went into a coma. But because of that accident, because of that incident, the state of California, they did an investigation. And the conclusion that they came to was that it wasn't an accident. They removed me from my mother's home. I was made a ward of the, ward of the state, and eventually I went into the foster care system. Shortly after I arrived to one of my foster homes, my foster mom, her name was Miss Alexander. Miss Alexander began locking me inside the closet with a light. She'd open the closet door, she'd kick me, hit me with a stick or a strap or whatever she could, whatever she had. It was while I was in that foster home that I was sexually abused for the first time in my life. 
And oftentimes people will ask, you know, if that has to be the worst thing that could happen to someone. I have scars on my body that you can't see. I have a burn here in my hand that she put there with an iron. But all of that pain went away. The worst thing that Mrs. Alexander would do is she would open the closet door, she would stand over me, and she would say, you're stupid and you ain't gonna ever amount to nothing. And that hurt me more than any of the physical kicks or the physical pain because I believed it for a long time. I believed that, that I would never amount to anything, just like she said. I didn't know this at the time, I found out a little bit later, but my grandmother, my hero, she had started going back and forth to court, trying to prove that she could take care of an active, handsome little boy. <laughs> and eventually, the state of California, they granted her full custody of me. And I'll never forget, I was, I'll never forget standing on Miss Alexander's front porch, waiting. She had my little belongings, everything that, that I had. I remember standing there, it may have only been a half an hour, but it felt like an eternity. And I can remember thinking, maybe no one's coming. But after a while, at the end of the block, I see the ugliest car I've ever seen in my life. And the car pulls up right in front of the porch. <laughs> and I remember all I could see are these two big glasses, bifocals. And I found out later that Grandma had glaucoma. She wasn't even supposed to be driving. <laughs> but she gets out of that big car, and she's got on this white floppy hat with this, it was a flower right there in the middle. And I remember she had on this long white dress that came all the way down to her ankles. And I found out later that, you know, that was Grandma's Sunday best. It was an outfit that she only reserved for special occasions. And I can remember for once in my life feeling like I was on a special occasion. Mm -hmm. so I remember jumping into Grandma's arms and squeezing her, and I remember her whispering and saying to me, everything's okay. You're a family. And everything was okay, just like Grandmother said. And I had a lot to look forward to. I found out that my mom was going to court trying to prove that she could take care of me. And I can remember sitting there with my mother and we, we talk and we had a lot of different conversations. One thing I can remember saying, Mama, you know, one day when I get big, I'm gonna buy you a nice house with a fireplace. I said, Mama, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy you a nice car. Not like Grandmama, so get you a nice one. <laughs> but the truth is, I just really wanted to become a family again. And that's what I looked forward to. When I was 12 years old, I was asleep on my grandmother's floor. It was about four o'clock in the morning. We get a knock on the door. And it was my mom's roommate. Miss Howe, Miss Howe, come quick. Miss Howe was my grandma. She said, come quick, it's, it's Ruth. Ruth was my mom. She said, I can't wake her up, I think she's dead. And I can remember laying on that floor, you know, kind of wishing it was, thinking, hoping that it was maybe a dream. But it wasn't. And that's how I found out that all the hopes and dreams and things that I had to look forward to weren't going to happen. I became very angry. I became confused. I was hurt. I didn't really understand what was happening. I started acting out, hanging out with the wrong people, breaking into houses, started stealing cars. I can remember not really caring what happened to me. I continued that behavior until I was 19. When I was 19, I found myself standing in front of a judge. I was handcuffed. I had a chain around my waist, and my handcuffs were attached to that chain. The judge looked at me and says, the state of California sentences you to 15 years in prison for armed robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. That day, when that door closed behind me for the first time as a convicted felon, I remember standing in that empty cell. I remember my knees started to get weak and they started to shake uncontrollably. I ended up, I collapsed and I fell to the floor. And I just started crying alone. And I can remember hearing voices. I heard the voice of my foster mom saying, you're stupid, you ain't gonna ever amount to nothing. I heard the voice of family members and friends of family that said, that boy's gonna end up just like his father. My father was a career criminal, he died in prison. I can remember laying there thinking to myself that this is where I'm gonna die. But here's what happened that would change my life. Shortly after I arrived to that prison, there was an educator there, his name was Charles Lyles, six foot three, ex-Marine. And I don't know what it was about me, but every time he saw me, he'd say, hey, Mr. Humphrey. And he had his big smile on his face. A smile that my kids would say, that's creepy. <laughs> but he smiled and he said, hey, Mr. Humphrey, how are you doing? He always called me Mr. Humphrey. He gave me that respect. He walked into my cell. He looked at me and he said, Mr. Humphrey, he says, prison doesn't have to be your life. He says, you can get out of here and you can do great things. 
He started to walk away, and before he walked out of my cell, he turned around one last time, and he says, Mr. Humphrey? I said, yes, sir. He says, I believe in you. And he walked out of my cell. And if he had continued to stand there, he would have seen the tears running down my face because no one had ever said that to me. But I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to make some changes, and I'm going to change my life. And a little over four years after the day I originally collapsed and fell to the floor, I walked out of that prison on parole. That was over 18 years ago. I've never been back other than to mentor and help other people. But here's what I know. I know that when you've had a rough life, when you feel unwanted, I know that when you have hopes and dreams and when you have things that you can look forward to and when you have people in place that support you and push you, I know that that gives you a reason to live. It is a great day to be alive. And that's something that I haven't always said, but now it's something that I say to myself every single day at some point. If I'm having a great day or a bad day, that's something that I say. But what I also understand is that what my grandmother was thanking her higher power for each and every day was for the opportunity that she'd been given. And she never missed an opportunity to tell anyone that would listen, especially me, it's a great day to be alive. We all have stuff. That stuff. That's what we're made of. That's the fuel. That stuff. This guy had his mother burned. Premature labor. He gets taken away from his family for no reason at three years old. Gets abused for years. Gets back home at 12. Loses his mother. Goes to jail for 15, gets, gets locked up for 15, does four, comes out. And now he's out there telling that story. That's his stuff. That's the stuff that's now impacting my life and impacting your life. And for him to be able to say, it's a great day to be alive. What are you telling yourself this morning? We all have stuff. I understand it. And we, what we have to do is we have to stop questioning why. We have to start stop questioning the why we have this stuff in our life. And instead, we have to embrace and understand that this stuff is required. You see, I had to go through stuff in order to get right here, right now with you guys, in order to meet you guys, in order to meet my wife, in order to get to, into the position that I'm in today, in order to be able to live out what I know God is calling me to live out, in order for me to do this that I do right now, I had to go through stuff. I had to go through homelessness. I had to go through uh, my, my dad and, and the abuse that we experienced when we were kids through him. I had to go through the loss, not, not uh, death of my child, but losing custody of my child for eight years. Eight years I wasn't able to contact my child. I had to go through stuff. I had to travel all over. I had to lose my, my father 10 years ago. I had to watch my grandpa die. I had to deal with my addiction issues. I had to not believe in God. There was a period of my life where I didn't believe. I didn't believe, and I understand now. I understand now that all of this stuff that we're going through, the stuff that you're going through today, the, all of that stuff, it's just coats of armor. That stuff is coats of armor. It makes you stronger. It made me stronger. We grow stronger through the struggles. And we each have our own unique and individual struggles. We have our unique and individual things that we have to go through. Our unique and individual stuff. But I'm here to tell you, I want to tell you today, it's a great day to be alive. And the stuff that you have and the stuff that you carry, it serves a purpose to make you stronger. It's all designed to make you stronger. Because listen, my friends, you are an amazing human being, uniquely made by the God of the universe. He made you to be the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And all of that stuff 
that you're dealing with, all of the stuff that you're going through, all of the struggles that you have, all of that stuff. All of that stuff was designed. It was actually specifically placed in your life so that you could become this incredible, amazing, impactful human being. It's all part of your evolution. And see, you're all starting. You're already starting to make really good decisions. You're part of the hashtag rise and grind group. You're surrounding yourself with positivity. You're posting positive stuff. You're watching videos like this. So you're already evolving. All of that stuff that you're doing, it's making an impact on your friends, on your family members, on your coworkers. It's making an impact on me. It's making an impact on everyone around you. And I, for one, I absolutely love you for it. If nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely love you. I do. I truly, truly do. So listen, do me a favor. If you need more videos like this, go to glennlundy.com. If you haven't hit that share button yet, hit it now. because Somebody needs to hear this stuff. If you need some Rise and Grind gear, a planner, whatever, go to glennlundy.com. But most importantly, please, most importantly, will you do me a favor? Will you please come back? Here again tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. We're going to do this all over again on hashtag rise and grind. Listen, it is a great day to be alive. I want you to tell yourself that all day today. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. This gets thrown at you. It's a great day to be alive. That gets thrown at you. It's a great day to be alive. Somebody tells you about something. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. Our feet hit the floor. We are alive. We are evolving. We have an opportunity to make an impact in our lives and in other people's lives. Today is a great day to be alive. Go out there and get after it. Love you. See ya.